In this video, we will be learning how to use fuzzing and property-based testing in Foundry to test the general behaviours of our contracts as opposed to just isolated scenarios. We will use an ERC721 drop contract as an example to show how you can use property-based testing to improve your tests. Before we get started, if you haven't already and you enjoy this type of content, please like, subscribe and hit that notification bell so that you can be sure to be notified for future content. Now let's jump into the video and get fuzzing. Firstly, I just want to go ahead and explain what fuzzing and property-based testing actually are. Sometimes you can see these terms being used interchangeably, so I think it's important to distinguish what the difference is. Fuzzing or fuzz testing is a method of testing that involves providing a contract with large amounts of input data called fuzz in order to find bugs or vulnerabilities. The random input data generated by a fuzzer can be designed to test specific parts of a contract's code, such as error handling routines, in ways that are different difficult or impossible to achieve through manual testing. Property-based testing is a method for evaluating software by defining properties that the contract should possess and then using random inputs to check if the contract adheres to those properties. The purpose of property-based testing is to uncover bugs by discovering inputs that cause the contract to deviate from the defined properties. That sounds quite complicated, but you'll understand a bit more when I talk about it in the context of Foundry. So in Foundry, fuzzing is used to generate a large number of inputs and then property-based testing can be used to specify the general behaviors the contract is expected to satisfy. By combining these two methods, we can ensure that our software is thoroughly tested and that any bugs or vulnerabilities are quickly identified and addressed. For ease, from now on in this video, I am going to refer to this simply as fuzz testing, but just know that this is using fuzzing to provide the random inputs for a property-based test. To show you fuzz testing in action, we are actually gonna be using the contract code from a previous video, which is how to easily create a ERC721 contract using Third Web and Foundry. And then we will be extending the tests written in that video to include fuzzing. If you want a more thorough walkthrough of building contracts with Third Web and an intro to testing in Foundry, then please go ahead and watch that video. So I'm going to go ahead and open up the contract code and as you'll see, you'll see the mint function that we created on that contract. And then if you open up the test file, you can see that we tested the mint function with zero tokens and got the expected revert message. And then also we tested it with two tokens and tested that it did in fact mint two tokens to the required test address. So if we run those tests using forge test, not fest, test, <laughs> then hopefully they both pass. And that is great because this unit test does test that we can mint a token and that you do have to in fact mint more than one token, but who's to say that this will work for all amounts? So I think that this would be a good example to add fuzz testing to this test contract so that we can test the general properties. So we do in fact need to determine the general property that we do want to be testing. So the general property to be tested here is that given a specified number of tokens, the test address does in fact receive that number of tokens. It doesn't have to be two, it just has to be more than zero. The great thing about Forge is that it supports fuzzing out of the box. And what do I mean by that? So it supports property-based testing for any test that has at least one input parameter and it will fuzz those inputs automatically. This makes it super easy to change our test. So I'm going to remove this part because it's important to make sure that your tests are descriptive and I am literally just testing the mint function. So I'm going to add a uint24 and we're going to call this amount because it's the amount of tokens. So we've added an input parameter. So as I said, Forge will automatically fuzz the input to this test and this test will become a property-based test. It is a uint24 because this is two to the power of 24, which is 16,777, 216 tokens. And I think that that is a sufficient amount of tokens to have our upper limit to. So that is a reasonable size to make the upper limit of our fuzzing. So wherever we've got two now, we need to, oh, no, not like that. Wherever we've got two, we need to now put amount. We can save that and then run our tests. Oh no, as you can see, our test failed. Now, 
I actually did expect that one. I'm sorry, I deceived you. But essentially, what we've done is we've tested all values of amount. Now this will include zero, so it's going to fail. And as you can see, the reason for the fail was you must mint at least one token. Ah, we wrote that earlier, so we were expecting that. So what we can do is we can actually include a little cheat code called assume. So it's vm.assume that the amount is more than zero. So if we save that and then we run our test again, which will again take a while. And while we wait, I also want to just mention that the number of fuzz runs that the um, that Forge automatically does is 256. And if you would like to change that, then you should head, head over to the Foundry book where you can see that runs refers to the amount of scenarios the fuzzer tested. So that's like the specific number of random inputs. And then you can configure this with the Foundry fuzz runs environment variable. So just to make things take a little bit less time, I'm going to restrict this to a UN16 just so that the highest amount of NFTs to mint is a little bit lower and it just makes it take a little bit less time and then we will rerun our tests. And as you can see, both of the tests have passed. We can see that the runs was, were in fact 256 and none of them failed. Awesome! So this means that we have successfully improved our testing methods by adding fuzz testing to our mint test. So you can now go ahead and if you wanted to deploy your contract using third web you, by entering the command npx deploy where it will detect that we are using foundry and this will open up a browser tab where you can enter the name of your contract where I'm just going to call this erc721 drop symbol so obviously I ran through this in more depth in the previous video um, but we are just, we could go ahead and do the same, so click deploy now, but I have done this previously and then that means that you are able to interact with the UI to mint tokens or, you know, run any of the functions on the contract, etc. If you would like more details and information on fuzz testing in Foundry, then please visit the Foundry book, which will be linked down below in the description. Thank you so much for watching. And if you have any questions about fuzz testing and how to implement this into your own projects, please join the Third Web Discord, where we'll be happy to chat things through with you. If you did enjoy this video, please remember to like and comment as it really does help support our channel. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Now let's jump into the video and get fuzzing. Oh my God, that's so cringy. <laughs>